Moin Moin Hamburg. Thank you for the opportunity to share my reflections on the Next Generation Literacies Network with you, even if I can't be there in person, unfortunately. Although the Next Generation Literacies Network is only three years old, it is embedded in a series of much more long-standing collaborations. As a network of networks, the Next Generation Literacies Network has brought together not only individual researchers, but three research teams, namely the Literacy and Diversity Settings Group based at Hamburg University, the Multilingual Innovation Research Team based at Fudan University and the Language on the Move Research Team based at Macquarie University. Over the holidays, I had a bit too much time on my hand and so I placed the three founding teams and individual network members on a world map. And I just wanted to show you um, what an amazing international network we have created with academic members on every continent. The broad international character of the network with its bases in Australia, Germany, China, and including many colleagues from many other countries from across the global north and the global south is truly unique and an achievement we can be rightly proud of. As such, I believe that the Next Generation Literacies Network will leave at least three lasting legacies related to the new knowledge we have created, related to the research capacity we have built, and related to the research community we have created. The Next Generation Literacies Network is very much a child of the COVID-19 pandemic. Ingrid Gogolin, Sylvia Melio Pfeiffer, Yongyang Sheng and I wrote the funding application in 2020, first year of the pandemic, and the funding period was um, from 2021 to 2023. The pandemic forced us to do things differently and affected all aspects of the work of the Next Generation Literacies Network. In terms of research content, for a research network devoted to linguistic diversity and social participation, it was only natural that many members of our community would turn their attention to the exclusion of linguistic minorities um, or minoritized communities from public service communication. Some of the internationally leading research into the intersection of linguistic diversity and emergency communication took place within the auspices of the Next Generation Literacies Network, such as the Language on the Move COVID-19 archives, which you see here on the slide, um, where we started to explore the lived experience of migrants, of indigenous people and of international students, from February 2020 onwards, um, or the special issue of, lingu of, of multilingual devoted to linguistic diversity in a time of crisis, which was edited by network members, professors Shang Jie from Shongnan University of Economics and Law in Wuhan, Li Jia from um, Yunnan University in Kunming and myself. In this research, we showed how the COVID-19 pandemic had exposed language barriers in societies around the world. It became obvious that the fact of linguistic diversity had not been incorporated systematically into emergency preparation and crisis planning. As a result, the effectiveness of the pandemic response suffered and linguistic minorities everywhere struggled to access timely high quality information. The consequences of widespread language and communication failures have been felt most heavily by the most marginalized group, groups with the um, mortality rates of migrant and indigenous populations exceeding those of linguistically dominant populations in every context where such data were collected. For those who hadn't noticed before, the pandemic has demonstrated that the intersection between linguistic diversity and social participation is vital to ensuring social cohesion, fair and equitable enjoyment of human rights and the well-being of all. As such, going forward, the research focus of our network will only continue to gain in importance. 
The next generation literacies network will also leave a strong legacy in terms of capacity building. Academia is a global enterprise, but one where information flows are from the Anglophone world to the rest and from the global north to the global south. Members of our network have played a key role in challenging those inequities and asymmetries in our field. Um, the map of the locations of our members I showed you earlier provides just one example. Another example comes from the Next Generation Literacy's virtual doctoral summer schools, which we um, convened every year over the life of the network under the theme linguistic diversity, education and social participation. These summer schools brought together students from across the world and from many countries, particularly in the global south. As such, we successfully piloted a multilingual and multimodal model of an international co-learning community facilitated by remote learning technologies. I want to take this opportunity to thank all those network members who readily volunteered their time and expertise so that students could attend the event for free. Um, if we want to challenge the linguistic and epistemic exclusion of peripheral multilingual scholars from global knowledge production, we need events such as these and um, like the summer school and networks such as ours. Networks that enable, provide linguistic and epistemic brokerage and help scaffold participation in academia as a community of practice, as Shang Tsie, Li Jia and myself showed in a positive case study, which we published in 2022 and which I warmly recommend to you. Let me now move on to the third legacy I want to talk about, community building. I'm talking about a humanistic way of doing research together, in interaction, in communion. When we did the research for um, this article you see here on the slide, um, Peripheral Multilingual Scholars Confronting Ep Epistemic Exclusion in Global Academic Knowledge Production, we framed epistemic justice within the evidence of research metrics. Essentially, we asked who gets published and who gets cited, and we showed how disproportionately both these metrics are skewed towards scholars based in the Anglophone world and in the global north. Yet, the last few years have shown that such metrics are quickly becoming completely meaningless, um, as meaningless as they were before as academics write more than they read, uh, a strange inversion of literacy practices that Deborah Brand noticed already back in 2014. The release of ChatGPT in late 2022 and similar um, automated writing technologies have further taken off the brakes on text production. Texts, including academic texts, are now being produced on an industrial scale just for the text of textual outputs, as opposed to sharing knowledge and ideas, a condition Matthew Kirschenbaumer has famously called the looming textocalypse. Um, of course, knowledge and ideas that only exist digitally, bypassing the human mind, are completely useless. To be useful, research must go hand in hand with community building and here too, the Next Generation Literacies Network leaves a strong legacy. For me personally, a recent highlight project um, combining original research, capacity building and community building has been Life in a New Language. Life in a New Language is a co-authored book project which will come out from Oxford University Press this year. Life in a New Language asks what it is like to learn a new language as an adult in real life as opposed to in the classroom. The project builds on ethnographic research with 130 migrants to Australia from 34 different countries on all continents. The research spans a period of almost 20 years between um, 2000 and 2020. And by sharing and reusing data 
um, from 130 participants from um, six separate ethnographic studies conducted by my co-authors and myself, we were able to cover a wide range of themes in a single analysis. Our methodological approach germinated within the Language on the Move research team and has been inspired by open science principles, the desire to share our data and pool our existing resources to paint a bigger picture of language and migration. Life in a new language is both a research product and a research process. The process with its multilingual collaboration across different levels of academic experience and its focus on data sharing and reuse is what I want to highlight here. It is an example of the kind of research and publishing community of practice that has been fostered within the framework of the Next Generation Literacies Network. We've had a lot of fun in the past three years, as this photo from our first in-person network meeting nicely illustrates. That was at Macquarie University in June 2023. And fun matters because it inspires us to do better research and be better researchers together. As Alexander von Humboldt reminds us, ideas can only be useful if they come alive in many minds. And that is what the Next Generation Literacies Network has achieved and what our legacy will be as we head into the next phase of our network. <laughs>